we're going to discuss the Big Ten. Don't we all love to hate the Big Ten? Yes. If you do, hit like and subscribe. At least like if you've already subscribed. Caleb, we dislike the Big Ten because of their pompous attitude. And we saw this with Texas at SEC Media Days, trying to get the horns down thing outlawed. The Big Ten has the gall and or stupidity to go out and get two teams from L.A. So we're going to get to see some Rutgers, UCLA, lacrosse, or gymnastics, or whatever the conference decides on. So I think it's pretty obvious that both the Big Ten and the SEC are very confident slash cocky, right? Correct. I will say this. I, I think there's good reason to be cocky if you're the SEC. You're the home of college football. The Big Ten, I do not understand their, I do not understand their cockiness whatsoever. Going out and trying to get West Coast teams is absolutely goofy. I think as good as the Big Ten is, they're far short of the SEC. So, Caleb, I ask you this question. Is the Big Ten closer to the SEC or the rest of the conference? The rest of the conference conference is. Excuse me. Yes. Now, keep in mind, what we're talking about now is going to be irrelevant in about two years. This conference pride thing is almost dead, and I think it's going to be dead very soon. You know, because their conference is just getting too big. As of right now, uh, if, the, if if the, if conferences were to stay as they were, I would say the Big Ten in five or six years will catch up to the SEC. But right now, going into this year, twenty twenty four, I I think in terms of quality of conference, I think it's laughable to say the SEC and the Big Ten as if they're one and the same. I think the Big Ten is closer in league with the Big Twelve and the ACC. As a matter of fact. I think there's a case for the ACC against the Big Ten. And I know Michigan just won the national title. I get it. But, Dave, let's – okay, they added USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington. Washington is not going to be as good this year. They just just lost Kalen DeBoer. They're not going back to the college football playoff. Um, Oregon is a big addition. USC, I don't know if you know this. Paul Feinbaum was talking about it the other day. They want Lincoln Riley gone already at USC. He's effectively fired. I have heard that. Yeah, so they're not good. US UCLA is not a great program. So really the only upgrade they got was Oregon. So let's talk about powers real quick in the Big Ten. Oregon, Michigan, Ohio State, and then at a tier below but still a good team is Penn State. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, that's it. Now, how deep does the SEC go? Because well, I got to get the SEC. The SEC laps that because you're talking, you know, Georgia. Texas, Alabama, LSU. Um, you can make, I mean, that that's just four right there. But then, I mean. Now, are you have, picking, no, no, wait a second. Are you picking out programs that could compete for championships right now or that are traditionally better? Right now. I'm talking right now. I'm okay. talking right now. Georgia, Texas, Alabama. Um, and I'm saying this off the top of my head, by the way. LSU, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Oklahoma. Um, I'm missing one. I'm missing somebody else uh, that was actually picked ahead of Tennessee in my mind is totally drawing a blank. The point is there's well, about. Th- I'll answer. I can answer maybe a little bit easier, but to your point, Tennessee has odds. Can you look the, uh, up, up Tennessee's odds to win a national title? Can you, are there odds out for that or, or make the college football playoff? Tennessee has a decent shot of, playing in the national championship game, has an outside shot of winning the national championship. Most national analysts would agree. Caleb thinks it's this year. They have a really good shot at making the college football playoff. So let's go with that last requirement. How many teams in the Big Ten, because the answer is seven in the SEC, have a really good shot because Tennessee was voted seventh in the SEC by the media. So there are seven teams, I believe, at least, that have a really good shot of making the college football playoff. I'm going to list off these teams, and you tell me if they have an opportunity of making the college football playoff. Michigan? Hey, now. Yes. Ohio State? Hey, now. Penn State? Yes. yes. 12-team playoff, yes. They would have been in this past year. They don't get in at 10-2. Hey, okay. 
I just don't like Penn State. Maryland? No. That's crazy. Rutgers? No. That's crazy. I agree with you. Michigan State? No. Well, is, are they still crazy. are they still paying Mel Tucker? Yes, they are. Indiana, of course. That's crazy. They're not going to make it. Now you go to the Big Ten West. There's not a team. There's no. not a single team. Iowa, Northwestern, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Purdue, Minnesota, Illinois. You suck, you jackass. No, none no, you them, have none you of have them to, could make a college football playoff this year. You have forgotten, though. You have to add the newcomers in. You, you you're not looking at the newcomers. To be fair, um, Oregon, Washington and uh, USC and UCLA. USC and Oregon do have betting odds. Do you consider them? I think both of them have realistic college football playoff shots. Is that fair to say? Say that one more time. The four newcomers, to be fair to the Big Ten, Oregon obviously has a college football playoff shot. They're a likely college football playoff team. Right. Washington and USC, you could consider having shots at the college football playoff, no. right? No. You don't, you don't think USC even has a shot? No, I think they both have coaching problems, and 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 USC just lost uh, Caleb Williams, and I, I mean, no, no, I don't. And Washington lost uh, an innovative coach. Let's face it, in a conference like the Pac-12 or whatever it is, the ACC or whatever, you can have one special player, or you can have one really special coach, and you can win at a high level. That. Barely gets you halfway through an SEC schedule. So here's the question then. Because the question is not the Big Ten versus the SEC because this year it's so clearly the SEC as it has been. But Dave, I'm pulling up FanDuel odds now. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So Notre Dame is a de facto ACC school. When you go deep into the top 20, there are as many ACC schools with national title odds as Big Ten schools. And keep in mind, there are four fewer ACC schools. I'm counting Notre Dame, by the way, because Notre Dame is a de facto ACC school. So three fewer. Hmm. Blandly, I told you tomorrow, you get to choose between the Big Ten and the ACC, and you're looking for the easiest road. Are you sure you're choosing the AC? Are you sure you're choosing the ACC for the easier road? Are you telling me the ACC is almost as good as the Big Ten? Is that what you're telling me? I'm telling you this year the ACC is almost as good as the Big Ten. And if you consider the fact that they have three fewer teams per depth, the ACC may be better than the Big Ten. Honestly, I am telling you that. I am saying that. TriStar Hats for the latest in TriStar Hats. Go to the original Hats Apparel and more. TriStarHatsCo.com. TriStarHatsCo.com. Use the promo code HOOKED for 10% off. Well, what does that say about what the Big Ten has put together? To well, me, here's that, the thing. It tells me it's just kind of blah. Well, this is the thing the Big Ten did. They put together, they are way behind in terms of talent. What they've done is going to put them in a position long term to compete with the SEC because this is what I keep bringing up. They went for the West Coast, and they have four West Coast teams now. They went for markets. What did that do, Dave? That allowed them to negotiate TV deals that lap the SEC. Literally lap. Because Greg Sankey's bringing in $3 billion a year to the SEC. The Big Ten's bringing in $7 billion. Those two contracts start this year. And the Big Ten's going to renegotiate in seven years before the SEC can renegotiate in 10 years. You can You guys can say what you want about NIL. The Big Ten is about to have a lot more NIL money to throw at players than the SEC is because they won't need booster money to upgrade the stadiums and upgrade and hire the coaches and do that thing because the TV money is going to come and do that. And that is why in five to seven years, right now the SEC has the regional advantage. They can recruit players in their backyard because all the talent is in the South. But I'm telling you right now, Michigan's and the Ohio State. Not, forget the Michigan's and Ohio State's. They're they're always relevant, right? They, they, they don't count. They're always relevant. Yes. The, Wisconsin, the Wisconsin's, the Nebraska's, not Iowa because they are stuck with that 175-year-old coach who will not change for the life of them. But Iowa's, Nebraska's, yes, maybe even the Penn State's, they're going to start rolling with that TV money that opens up their NIL checkbooks. They're going to start rolling into SEC country and saying, hey, you want to go play for Georgia for $300,000? Or do you want to come play for me? 
for eight hundred thousand dollars. Now you say you don't trip over nickels and search for do- for uh, millions, but tripping over nickels is usually like three hundred or two fifty, three hundred or eight hundred thousand. All of a sudden, that money screams a little bit bigger. Okay, here's what I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. Fifteen okay. seconds, for Joe Newberg. Fifth year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. Joe Newbert Collision Center. Caleb, simple fact is there are enough players in the SEC to stock all of their teams that can compete at that level and have the facilities. I'm not talking about the Vanderbilts of the world, but there are enough players in the SEC to stock those teams, Texas, Oklahoma included, with talent that will be willing to take a discount to play in the nation's best conference. Let's just face it, okay? Let's be honest. We've all been up north. The SEC is just a cooler conference. I mean, even when the Big Ten tries their big noon kickoff, which people like the show more than college game day because it's different. I get that. Ah. But all that being said, Caleb, when it, it, it may be it may be different. It may be a better pregame show. But I just and I, I've I've worked for a company that was based out of Ohio. They knew when the Ohio State Michigan game was, but they might not know the other weeks who Ohio State was was playing and they were Ohio State fans. They might not know till Thursday or Friday that it was Michigan State. Tennessee fans know who Tennessee's playing in the second week of December. So do most SEC fans. That culture, that pool, we talk about discounts for Josh Heupel because he coaches receivers and that should help, or discounts to play for Saban because he'll get you to the NFL, or same thing for Kirby Smart. How about the discount to be close to home, and that's where the best football players are in the South? So I see okay. where you're going, but I can't I can't buy into that. Okay, but here's what I mean. I, I'm um I don't think that like this is going to make the Big Ten surpass the SEC just straight up, although it could because the monetary value is so different. We're not talking like again, Dave, we're not talking a discount of like, okay, Tennessee comes in and offers a Georgia kid three hundred thousand, Georgia offers that kid two hundred and fifty thousand, and that kid chooses to stay and play for Kirby Smart for two hundred and fifty thousand. We're talking offering 700,000 versus 300,000. Discounts are relevant based on what the will you at least agree that it matters the size of the discount? Yes. I mean, and, I'm talking about roughly a 25% discount. Whatever the yes. number is, would you I mean, I think we're most gonna have to of take us, a 75% discount. The Big 10 has that much more money coming okay. in. Well, then we're having a different conversation. Yes. I have a feeling though. And this is based off the dial strip. That that television contract may have some wiggle room in it that may be reworked until it is the SEC until it is the SEC ne- got burned they got burned now here's the other layer to this this is I'm not discounting your discount uh, you see what I did there I'm not I discounting see. your discount I just, bu- I just buckled up Aaron Rodgers style <laughs> oh my Achilles it's my one dis- weakness I'm not discounting your discount theory I am saying, though, it's still an equalizer to a certain degree. It does lessen it because while, like, it does give the Big Ten an advantage that doesn't put it on par with the SEC but makes it not as far behind. And here's what I'm trying to say. Right now, and you tell me, I, I, don't, I haven't even gotten your thoughts on this. Am I crazy for thinking the Big Ten is closer to the SEC, to the ACC than the SEC in terms of quality? No. Right no. No, 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 you're not. Okay. Nope. What I mean is, Five years from now, I don't think that'll be the case to you. Five years from now, I think the Big Ten will be closer to the SEC than the ACC. And some ACC teams that make the jump to those two conferences. Exactly. And so I mean, the the two conferences are going to pull away. But right now, as of July 2024, that's not the case. Right. And that's where I met. It's like right now, the Big Ten, it's funny when people talk about Big Ten, SEC, Big Ten, SEC. They're doing that because of where college football is going. But if you look at the quality of the conferences right now, I mean, it's kind of weird to me that the ACC can't negotiate and get bigger schools than the Big Ten because the ACC, I think, competes with the Big Ten to a certain level in terms of quality. And the Big 12, that's a different story. They're being all flashy, which is cool. I actually think what they're doing is smart. But I I just don't think that – I don't – 
I, I think it's weird when we when we lump them together because really in terms of quality, it's the SEC. They're doing that because they know about the Big Ten contracts and they know what I know, which is that because of the money the Big Ten's about to bring in, the Big Ten is about to compete with the SEC in a way that they've never been able to before to where, put it this way, Dave, I do think this, five to seven years, I think even if the SEC is better, it's not going to be as noticeable as it is right now. It's like, okay, maybe maybe it's slightly better, but it's like it doesn't really make a difference what conference you play in. It's not like right now, eight and four in the SEC is 10 and two in the Big Ten. Is that a fair comparison? Yes. I think in about seven years, 10 and two will mean the same thing in the SEC and the Big Ten. And right now, we, we had the discussion about Penn State, whether or not they were playoff quality. Well, they are based off what they won last year, but they wouldn't be playoff quality if they were in the SEC. They would lose four games. Yes, they're well, depending on how the schedule set up, because as we know, right. Lane Kiffin is the pin Ole Miss is the pin state of the SEC. Is that fair to say? Yes. 